Hey guys, Ron here, and a few months ago I released another video in which I made pre-evolved forms of legendary Pokemon. So how about we get closer to the end of this limited series with another episode full of adorable prevos to godlike creatures. Keep in mind that most Pokemon don't only grow up when they evolve, their concept evolves too. The entire point is to try to find separate concepts for these Pokemon so they aren't literally just miniature versions of their evolved forms. But some will be. It's kind of unavoidable. Make sure to check out my previous Pokemon creation videos and consider leaving a like and subscribing if this is your cup of tea. I just released a video with new evolutions I made and some fake mon I made based on anime characters. So check them out when you're done with this video. But let's begin by making a prevo for the first legendary Pokemon I ever caught, Groudon. Ruby was my introduction to mainline Pokemon games, so I want to honor the Groudon by giving him a child. Groudon has always had some ankylosaur traits, so I want to express that a bit more by making its prevo bipedal something that scurries close to the ground. It has great power when it comes to, you know, like controlling the earth, but it, it, it can't move continents. It'll be a cuter Groudon based on lizards, like the Horned Lizard and Armadillo Lizard. Groudon's armor makes the patterns look like cracked earth, something ancient. While this tinier dude won't have these epic patterns and therefore no cracks. First, I'm simply making the shapes that will form a thorny lizard and a long tail that will almost look like a hand. And then I'm basically adding a Groudon to these proportions. A Groudon with way less features and simpler shapes. For example, a semicircle eye instead of a quadrilateral. Even its limbs are basically less segmented versions of its evolved form. I gotta pretend like upon evolution, its arms and forearms separate like an egg cracking, revealing the famous patterns across Groudon's body. A spike on its back so it can't be attacked from above. A simpler version of Groudon's tail and Groudon's symbols. The colors were tricky because it already looks so much like a Groudon. I didn't want to give it Groudon's exact color scheme, so the thorny lizard inspired these variations in color, almost like camouflage to blend it into the hot desert and volcanoes. The final version will have white eyes to make it cute. Behold, Groudunce, the land Pokemon, a ground type. In a time long before humans, Groudunce were abundant. They crawled out of volcanic vents and settled the inhospitable deserts. They rely on instinct for most of their lives and aren't fairly intelligent, but are incredibly destructive. They can manipulate the earth using brute strength. They're hot to the touch and indomitable. Their skin instantly evaporates water, and their spikes keep them safe from larger predators. They spend all day basking in the sun, stiller than a statue, but will run at full speed to find warmth during the night. It is believed that only the strongest Groudons evolved into Groudon. I have a feeling that in a future game, you would simply acquire a Groudon's egg that evolves into Groudon at level 40. You can't personally breed your own Groudon. I was a bit worried that this Pokemon was too similar to Groudon, but a bunch of small differences did add up into making it a distinguishable Pokemon on its own. After all, a bunch of older generation Pokemon look extremely similar to their evolved form. Now I want to give some more lore to a legendary Pokemon with an amazing story. Silvalli is actually a legendary Pokemon, if you didn't know. Type Null is too. So let's make a prevo for it. Type Null is the Aether Foundation's lab experiment to make a powerful Chimera in order to fight Ultra Beasts. It's modeled after Arceus. This is not real, by the way, if you if you're wondering. But I assume before Type Null was infused with the cells of all known Pokemon types, it was a normal yet powerful Pokemon with great potential. Once the experiments were a success, it evolved into Type Full but eventually rejected the Arceus system and went berserk. It was given a limiter helmet, put into cryogenic stasis, and named Type Null. So let's make the Pokemon that would ultimately become the Beast Killer. I'm giving it the stance of a playful dog. I'm taking inspiration from Evolution, since like Eevee, it has great potential and access to multiple types upon evolution. Every aspect of Silvalli will be thrown away, except for its torso and mane. It won't acquire its talons and tail until experimentation. It has a sharp, beak-like snout, but no armor or modifications on its face. Its ears are the same, as well as the base of its crest. That was actually natural. Now it's all about making it look simple, again, like a legendary dog-like Eevee. Here's how its original tail looked, with a color scheme pretty similar to its evolved form, and gray, like Type Null. Here is Latent, the primary Pokemon, from the words Latent and Tint. Latent, since it has powers dormant inside of it, and Tint, representing the colors it will become. Latent are fierce yet spirited Pokemon. They are very energetic and love to play. They will often get carried away and use too much of their strength when practicing their moves. They are naturally skilled in combat and have access to a variety of moves. They use their crest to stabilize their quick movements as they recklessly run. These incredibly rare Pokemon can be found on a hidden island. The Aether Foundation once went on an expedition to this island and nursed a trio of injured Latent on Aether Paradise. Professor Moan gave one of each to his beloved family as valiant companions, but upon the disappearance of her husband, Lusamine handed her family's latent over to Faba. There is no known natural evolution of latent. They live uninhibited on their island paradise. It has the ability Scrappy, so there is no type of Pokemon latent cannot hit. 
I like the implication that Gladion had history with his Sylvalli before it was turned into Type Null. I also like the idea that if you were to acquire a latent on its uh, native island, it would not evolve because it wouldn't be experimented on. You simply slap an Eviolite on one of these babies and I assume it could be useful. Giving these guys a good ending would be pretty tight. Now, Volcanion is a relatively unpopular mythical, but I've always been a fan of its concept and design. Fire and water is obviously a cool type, so we gotta keep it going. So considering its face and name, I always assumed that it was partially based on the Shisa, basically the Japanese versions of Guardian Lions. So that makes Volcanion this feline steam tank. How about we lean into the geyser aspect of this Pokemon, and instead of making its Prevo mechanical, it'll look more natural, basically like a pot of water that it blasts out of its back, like a geyser instead of a hose. It'll also be based on lion cubs or small cats in general, so it'll be cute and feisty. The Volcanion Prevo went through so many iterations. The first one had a completely different face from Volcanion. I wanted it to look more like a cute kitten with a machine body, but that looked too disjointed, especially when I wasn't able to find a proper jaw. I decided to overhaul it completely and make a face a bit more angry, but still looked nothing like Volcanion, so I simply decided to give it the forehead of a Volcanion, whiskers and chin instead of a full-on beard, and a strong stance with a pot body. But I didn't know what to do with the legs. That's when I decided to make them simple tubes, as if it was made of clay, like the rest of its body. When it evolves, those limbs separate into mechanical arms, and since the hoses Volcanion has are technically arms, I used the claw-like patterns that this Pokemon has on the end of its legs on the top of the pot as well. It looks like an ancient painted pot. I decided to make it orange in the final art, because it's not as uh, hot as its evolved form. Take a look at Volcub, the steam Pokemon. Volcub are generally arrogant and inattentive Pokemon. They are tough to train because they rarely listen. They spill steaming water from their backs as they run. However, this is a good sign of their health. A well hydrated Volcub will contain a full back of steaming water. They're able to vertically expel water at high pressures. Steam is released from their nose when they're ready for battle. They can release jets of water from their palms, allowing them to jump high and fast. It evolves into Volcanion when traded. It can be bred from a Volcanion, holding the steam incense a new item that also increases the power of water and fire type moves. This was the toughest to design since Volcanion already has such complicated shapes, but once I realized I didn't have to make Volcub look mechanical, it became a, a bit easier. Especially since the whole point is that Volcub possesses much more primitive technology. It's basically just a stove with water. Now the Swords of Justice are another bunch of Pokemon that I, I think get a bad rap, but I think a Prevo of one of them would improve their popularity. So I picked their leader, Cobalion. I actually really like Cobalion, and I, I figured that this serious and responsible leader was once reckless and irresponsible. Probably a kid with big ambitions that was slowly hardened by traumatic experiences. Perhaps Cobalion likes Keldeo so much because he sees his younger self in Keldeo. He wants to guide him. So I will make a pre-evolved Cobalion that takes inspiration from Keldeo. As if Keldeo will eventually get an evolved form that takes inspiration from Cobalion. It literally has the proportions of what you'd expect a baby antelope deer Pokemon to have. The face of a Cobalion as a kid, so no mustache. Originally I gave it these curved horns with some hair that migrates to its chest upon evolution, kind of looking like Keldeo, but it looked too much like Loki now, so I gave it horns modeled after Keldeo Resolute. It has a spot that looks like a button on a snazzy outfit of a young noble boy, finishing off the rest and giving it a horse tail, like Keldeo, with the colors of Cobalion and Keldeo. Almost as if it's wearing no sleeves like a rambunctious child. Makes him look more informal before he must assume his duties as an adult. Say hi to Cobalio, the strong will Pokemon, a fighting type. Cobalio are resolute and honorable. They're determined to do good and make friends. They love frolicking around forests and fields, greeting all the Pokemon they wish to keep safe. Their mere appearance makes those around it feel safe. However, Cobalio is prone to overestimating their power and taking on tasks they are unable to easily carry out. They have good relationships with humans, but their love can quickly become contempt if they are ever betrayed by those they trust. Although they often make mistakes, they never repeat them. When angered, they will proceed to kick their foes with immense power. I like to think that Eo is the suffix at the end of the names of all the Swords of Justice pre-evolved forms. Cobalio can be found in a specific hidden grotto in a future region of mine. It evolves upon learning Sacred Sword. I've already loved Cobalion, so if I was able to train and evolve one, it would, it would feel amazing. And finally, I want to make a fifth member of the Tapus, one that could evolve into any of them at any point. Now, since every Tapu has a shell based on some kind of animal, I gotta figure out one to apply to this baby Tapu. We already have a mammal, a bird, an insect, and a fish. So I think the general group of animals that is left and should be represented is reptiles. So, I'll base the shell of the new Tapu on a chameleon. 
especially since chameleons can, you know, change colors, which this Pokemon can do upon evolution. I want to emphasize how this Pokemon isn't good at being a Tapu yet, so he'll be doing a few things slightly differently or off. In order to understand the orientation of this Pokemon, I had to first design it with its shell closed. Again, kind of looks like a chameleon on a tree. When the mouth opens up, the shell acts like a party hat. But what's funny is that its head faces the side of the mouth, so when this child is in the shell, he's floating sideways, almost like he can't properly act like a fully grown Tapu. You see the mouth? That's not a mouth. All the Tapus have white patterns on their faces in different shapes. His looks like a mouth, so it, it always looks happy, even when it's not. He's the only Tapu to actually have feet. He frolics through the air as he floats. His tail looks like a curled up chameleon mouth. When the shell is closed, it can pop out its tail to grab things. He's gonna be aqua green with some pink. All Tapus have a white pattern on their body as well, so this Tapu's pattern looks like a diaper. Meet Tapu Gecko, the land spirit Pokemon, a pure fairy type. Tapu Gecko can be found on all four islands of Alola during festivals. Tapu Gecko loves to dance with humans, usually embarrassing itself in the process by stumbling around and getting too rowdy. The aura that emanates from this Pokemon vitalizes festivities. It often makes a mess at its parties and will curl up into a shell when confronted with the consequences of its actions. The citizens of Alola, however, rarely punish it since it evolves into the guardian deities they worship. Tapu Gecko does actually mean well, but it can get carried away when it has fun. It never really gets angry and will always run away from those it doesn't like. It would rather just find fun somewhere else. Tapu Gecko will often steal food by hiding inside its shell and grabbing sweets with its sticky tail. It evolves into one of the Tapus at level 30 depending on which island it's on. You're given a Tapu Gecko egg in order to acquire one. I like the idea that instead of actually destroying Alolan lives when it gets wild, like the other Tapus, it simply wrecks parties. But if you enjoyed these Pokemon, please leave a like if you want a part 4 and check out the previous creating new Pokemon videos. Go to the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, which you can also do by pressing the join button. Follow me on Twitter where I post previews and full art of my fake mon too. Bye!